Hello, and welcome to a very special 8-minute demo video series. Today, we're going through a video tutorial on OIS 6.3 Advanced Workflow Design and Best Practice Video Shorts. Yep, these are going to be smaller videos on specific topics. And the topic we're going to talk about right now is Pipeline versus Legacy Mode. All right, let's take a look at Pipeline and Legacy Mode. Pipeline, as you know, is the current and default. So if we create a new policy, we go into Properties, Run Behavior, we can see that the policy mode is set to Run in Pipeline mode. Now if you had imported previous versions predating Pipeline mode, you import those into a current version, this will be unchecked by default, which allows you to run your, those policies in Legacy mode. So the difference in the UI is this checkbox here in the policy properties on the run behavior tab. Now some notes about legacy. Legacy is generally undesirable. Legacy objects require legacy mode and you can see I have legacy objects enabled here. If you don't see those you can go to configure and you could show legacy objects which will require you to restart the client and then you'll see this category. And In this category you have a bunch of different objects, many of them labeled legacy, that only work in legacy mode. Many of them are replaced in the current version. In fact, anything that has legacy in parens is replaced by a very similar object that works for pipeline. But things like wait are not replaced in their old form, but the replacement for wait in many cases is the junction object. Send pop-up is no longer available for 2008 because of the interactive restrictions. And the biggest hurdle that you're going to find with legacy are the email objects. Because there is no current replacement for read exchange, read email, process exchange, process email, which may not be a big deal. There are community CodePlex projects available for Exchange, nothing for SMTP, but I mean it depends on your need. Monitor performance, there are better tools for that, so you know SCOM, and then uh, Manage Text File was replaced by the Text File Management objects, and Git Dial-up status, I don't think that anyone ever used that. And then filter exchange email and filter email, again, email objects aren't available. And then again, anything with a legacy has been replaced. So for the most part, you get away with not using anything legacy. One thing that legacy does allow that pipeline does not is the circular graphs or cycles. So if we go in here, run behavior, uncheck run in pipeline, now we're in legacy mode. Now, if we wanted to, and you'd have to have good reason to do it, you can start a policy, kick off a process, notify, and then you can go back to the run process. So you could create a circular graph like this or a cycle. And if we check that in, it'll be just fine. Because what this will do is it'll execute this object, this object, go down to here, then back up and perform an in policy loop. Now, if we wanted to say promote this to pipeline mode, try to check it in, it yells at you because there, it contains a cycle. But as we learned in the looping, it's easily resolved by simply adding a trigger at the end and then triggering the same policy. And there you have it. There's your in policy looping. So. It's uh, at the policy level looping there. So that's one thing for legacy, and this is no longer a legacy policy, so I should rename that. All right, so no, no one gets confused. The only other use case I could figure that you'd need to use a uh, legacy policy is in conjunction with an actual pipeline policy, and that's where objects, where the objects aren't replaced, like that email object. So if we grab a read email, this has to be in legacy mode, but there's nothing that says we can't trigger a pipeline mode policy. So if we trigger, if we trigger that same pipeline policy, we 
check it in so it registers the new name. There you go, it's the new name. Now I can trigger pipeline policies from legacy policies, meaning I could have legacy functionality mixed with pipeline functionality. And that's only in special cases like read email. In fact, um, this is short lived, especially if you're going to go to System Center Orchestrator where the legacy objects no longer exist at all. So you won't be able to do this functionality. But if you're with OIS 6.3, this is perfectly fine. You, you read email, pass it in to a trigger, the data that you want, and then trigger another pipeline policy. And that is the best practice for that. And obviously, if you're going to do a read email, you're probably going to want a monitor date time on the front. So you can dictate how often you want to pull for the new email, 30 seconds. And if you've used this object at all, you want to make sure you're filtering greater than zero. That way, you won't trigger something every time, every 30 seconds. So this is the uh, best practice for using legacy objects. Keep them to small policies if you absolutely need to. And then when, when you can, as soon as possible, get out and trigger a pipeline policy to do the rest of the work. And remember, the switch is run behavior in the policy properties. For that checkbox for pipeline, for pipeline it's checked. For legacy, it's unchecked. Probably most importantly, especially given the time frame, System Center Orchestrator will not support legacy functionality. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.